everyone, this is Kim with Abundant Life Tarot and we are doing a car by car video. We're going to take a closer look at the devil card. And this is where I take um, a culmination of all of the devil cards throughout many of my decks, not all of my decks, but um, many of the ones I, I think we could have a brief discussion on about the image, about what he evokes inside of me. And then, of course, you can feel free to chime in in the comments section below to give me your insights on some of the devil card meanings that you see, or maybe share some of your favorite devil cards in your own decks. And even better, bonus points for those who actually do video responses looking at card by cards in each of your decks. And I felt called to take a closer look at the devil card because... I don't know. I think that the Devil card is one of those make or break cards in a deck that when you look at that particular card, you know if you are going to be drawn to that particular deck or not. And the Devil card is definitely one of those defining cards for myself when I'm looking for a new deck. And these um, chosen uh, Devil cards that I have here, <laughs> um, they spoke to me for various different reasons and like I said before this isn't encompassing all of my tarot's devil cards I also want to mention that this is the first of this series this is an ongoing series that I will be doing uh, but I won't just be doing tarot primarily it will be tarot because um, that's where we have the most opportunity to look at uh, card by cards. Um, but, you know, I have oracle decks that have uh, cards that have the same keywords like secrecy or desire or um, love or whatever, you know. I'm just throwing out some keywords. And so I can take those same, you know, those check in on my puppy here it's not really a puppy anymore he's a dog uh, so i can look at those oracle cards and also compare and contrast um, from oracle deck to oracle deck so it won't just be exclusive to tarot although the bulk of them will probably be tarot because it's that's i think where the the meat of the lessons will really come into play um, and I think we can gain a lot by just taking a moment to look at the images of a particular card especially with the tarot and Oracle too but especially with the tarot and just sitting with it for a moment knowing yes the book meanings sure but then also taking that knowledge of the book meanings and then looking at the images and seeing what else you can pick up on in that particular card from that particular deck. And I think this is how I learned um, from deck to deck, is looking at how the deck creator interpreted the devil card, for example, and how in their view, it plays out and I think that when I see other YouTubers or other people who are into tarot and they discuss the card meanings and they discuss their interpretations I learned something from that as well so I'm hoping that this will be a gift to people who want to explore some you know meanings to the particular tarot cards and then maybe to offer up some additional meanings that they would like to add to the conversation. So wanted to just say that because this is an ongoing series that I will have to my channel, Abundant Life Tarot, and it's um, an ever evolving process. So I'm open to feedback on if there's a card you're dying to see or a deck that you've seen that I've had in my collection you want to maybe explore a card out of that and then I can find similar cards in other oracles or other tarot and we can have fun with this and it can be very dynamic. All right, so at first I was going to 
Um, just kind of do like this, and, and maybe I will. We'll see. I really wanted to discuss the cards looking down because I wanted to also kind of have a reaction as I turn over a card and we look at it together. Um, but I'm now thinking I may want to change my mind. And we'll try this format and then maybe the next video that I do for this um, card by card series, we'll try it looking down. How about that? All right, so let's get started. So I am going to just first go give a little rundown of some keywords that are typically associated with the devil card. And then that way, from there, we just kind of have a little foundation. Let's see. And this is from Marsha J. Kenyon, just a tarot keywords and meanings book that she created. All right, so typical card meanings or typical devil meanings. The star sign that's associated is Capricorn and temptation, greed and materialism, trapped by own doing, power through money, lust, and sex, emotional blackmail, excessive behavior, indulgence, selfishness, oppression, slavery, and victimization, sexual abuse, a warning, be more practical. So I like that. I, I like her, her take on the key meanings or whatever on the, the card meaning. So I think that's a good foundation to start with. First up, we have the Everyday Enchantment Tarot by Poppy Palin. And here is her devil card. Now, let me actually show you my traditional centennial devil card. This is the Rider Waite Smith Centennial Edition, the Devil, what we traditionally know in the Tarot as the Devil card. And then we have the Everyday Enchantment Tarot. What I really like about this particular Devil card, it is modern. It is a modern take on the devil. This person is just, okay, I, I'm, I'm just going to say, like, balls to the wall, doing what he wants to do, when he wants to do it. He's driving down a one-way street the wrong way, smoking cigarettes, got drink in his car, um... I mean, there's people looking at him, but he doesn't seem he's oblivious to it now. He's kind of wrapped up in his own trappings. And he's headed to a dangerous place if he continues on this path. He, there's by no stretch of the imagination that he's being practical, reasonable, or using really any kind of care as he's going through life. And so I like this modern take on the devil card. I mean, you know, we can look at their traditional one and we see, you know, the trappings, the attachments to something that feels bigger than ourselves, but really it's our own doing oftentimes, if not all the time. And so... This is like our baseline here. So there's a modern take there. Now let's take a look at Stephen Bright's. Oh my gosh, why am I drawing a blank? Oh my gosh, Stephen Bright's deck. It will be in the description box. 
Sorry, guys. I'm like drawing a blank. Anyways, um, I love this double card because here we have another modern take. You know, there's a baby reaching up to what maybe to the baby appears to be somebody who's safe, someone who's okay, but really is not really is quite the opposite and will kidnap the baby probably you know it's you know not seeing things for what they really are and and being like a baby constantly reaching for things that are not good for us interesting i like the modern take um, we can continue on with the mod modern take and um, some of the ones I picked have some overt nudity. So I have to put the warning out there if you're under 18, well, you know, don't watch the nudity. <laughs> um, but let me see if we can just first start off with some that doesn't have any nudity around to be all modest and weird about it. Okay, so here is the Numinous Tarot. And we have the shadow is how it's called. And I love this double depiction. The reason I love this double depiction a lot is because we have here... You know, this person is bound. But, you know, again, it's that attachment. It's that I, I'm in a, a vicious cycle. I cannot break free. But can I or can't I? And it's got this person. It's going through this person. It's preventing this person from having a voice. It's preventing this person from, at times, really having a soul, you know. It's just a poignant depiction of the devil. I really like this. And this person is open and exposed and vulnerable. You know, sometimes when I think of addictions, I think of a person who could be in this state. No voice anymore. Their addictions are running them soulless cycles, vicious cycles, self-imposed vicious cycles. Let's see. Let's see what else do we have. Let's look at the Thelema Tarot. The devil here. Attractive, this devil. If you look closely, there's like little webbings and, you know, trapped in the web of desire, trapped in the web of lusting, trapped in the web of, web of greed, trapped in the web of addictions. And oftentimes things are quite attractive when we're talking about the devil energy and we can't help but to gravitate towards it. Well, we maybe should turn away. Hmm. What else can we take a look at here? Oh, the ETA tarot. I love this card. Okay, let me tell you why. First of all, it's just a feast for the eyes. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see it but here's a foot right so I get a sense that this person if you can see it is that a stripper is that a stripper pole um i'm gonna have to look at it for a moment you know you see a nude woman you see actually right here another image of an actual woman going down the pole and you can see the high heel this purple high heel shoe the breast here. I love what this devil card is giving me. I mean, it's 
definitely giving me that lust energy. Mm. Wow. Oh my God. Take that. Take it in for a moment. I'm just going to. Take that in. Okay. That's all I'm going to say on that. All right. Um, another lusty one. There is nudity. Here's the will of the year. And this particular card is all about being uh, succumbing to lusty desires that take over. What comes to mind, for example, is when, let's say, a man is having an affair on his wife at work. And then people start to find out at work. And his lust is, you know, taking over. It's engulfing everyone that is surrounding the situation. Everyone's getting hurt. Look closely, there's lashes. Wow. Quite the double card, that one. Okay. Let us look at another one. It's like I'm trying to pick which one I want to discuss next. Because some of them are pretty similar. I'm going to put the ones that are kind of similar to the traditional. You know, it's kind of, I don't know, not quite safe for television. <laughs> okay, here's the Vision Quest Tarot. And this is about attachments, about being attached, being tormented. I love how it has the keyword torment down at the bottom. Um, perhaps it's at our own doing, our own behest that we are tormented. Nevertheless, we're dealing with it and we're facing it, you know. This person, in this case, I mean, is not facing us. So I suppose you could look at this card and say, just like in a devil moment, you're not really facing what you need to face. You need to turn around, you need to detach from the situation, turn around and face it and move on and move forward. What are you doing, Bishop? Let's see. What other ones? Now here is the triple goddess tarot. This is one of my work. I'm trying to get it to focus. Let's see. I hate this. I hate when it doesn't focus. Okay. Anyways, this is one of my working decks, and I love it because of the devil card. At first, I didn't really care for this devil card. Didn't like it. The reason being is that it's like, what the hell is going on here? You've got a, this is a crone-esque deck. So, you, know, you have this woman here, this, you know, this older woman. She's standing at the edge of the forest. Does she go forward? Does she not? What's keeping her there? She's attached. She's afraid to go. Fear. You know, sometimes the devil is about certain fears that hold us back. You know, some things may appear to be safe and secure when in fact it's not. Things lurking around that we need to face and turn around and deal with and we're choosing not to. So, it's an interesting take on the devil, for sure. Hmm, let's see. Looking at the traditional. 
and then the not so traditional. Let's look at Cosmic Tarot. Oh, I forgot to get the Cosmic Tribe. And my dang Sun and Moon. And I can't go get it now. Oh, well. Here's the Devil from the Cosmic. And I'm going to try to get in there so you can see some of the details. You've got this devil in a suit. You know, I get corporate. This is the cards. The next set of cards I'm going to show you is dealing with more of the bigger level devil stuff. <laughs> the upper echelons of devilhood. So now we're looking at corporate greed and we're looking at um, heavy bureaucracy for the sake of, you know, keeping only the top elite with abundance and preventing the rest from having it. Many different attachments, many people attached. Or did they choose to be attached? Were they lured to be attached? I don't know. Hmm. Then we have the Delta Enduring, the double card from the Delta Enduring. Modern take, social justice take on it. The reason I really like this double card is because, you know, some people would say the cop who's, who's trailing behind this black man, young black man, is the devil. Well, some people would say that really maybe this person is up to no good and that the police is just simply making sure that this person doesn't do anything but you know depending on on who's doing the reading and who's experiencing the reading you're going to experience this double card in different ways things are not as always what they seem. What makes us, what drives us to do devilish things? And that's what I like about this card. It's like, okay, well, we could start to think about what drives us to do devilish things. Power, greed, ignorance, Fear, a lack of understanding. I some could even say evil, but I'm very careful about using the word evil because I know that people do devilish things from a place of lack of love, fear even hate it's just a deep sadness and disgust with who you really are and it's so you know because how can you really hate someone else when it's really hating yourself because we're all a reflection of the one i don't know this card evokes all these different things, even the red, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, like this particular card draws a lot of different emotions for me, being a black woman in America.
witnessing the things that I've witnessed. Then, again, along that same vein, the New Era Elements Tarot. Now we're at big, big. Someone told me when I did the unboxing that this particular one um, is definitely, you know, this is the depiction of Emmett Till, the young man, the young teenage boy who was murdered for what now has been, it turned out that he didn't actually perhaps whistle or say something derogatory towards a white woman. And she's come forward and said it wasn't quite the way she had reported it. But aside from that, I see this as many brown and black children throughout the world, not sadly just Emmett Till, but many children. And where the devil comes in is, are we doing anything about it? And if we're not, are we turning a blind eye? Are we choosing to turn a blind eye? Are we allowing the, the devils of the world to, to do devilish things? Are we being complicit and allowing it? It's, that's just as wrong as being the one who is perpetuating the actual genocide. For the sake of money and greed and power and, you know, it's, it's quite a disturbing depiction of the devil card because now we're talking big levels of the devil here. People, you know, do things and not think about the consequences. Or maybe they do know about the consequences but don't care. And it's like, that's not how we should be operating in this world. That's not how we should be rolling. Then, let's see, we are almost to, we're going to transition to the more traditional meanings. Here's the devil with the everyday witch. This devil is like, um, you know, I get a sense of, like, like, this is like a witch tale of Adam and Eve. He's trying to lure them with ice cream. There's El Diablo, the volcano in the background, you know, threatening to blow. He's luring them with money and ice cream. And, you know, they're not certain, you know, I'm, but this particular devil card, I don't, I don't know if I'm a hundred percent sold on it. It, you know, of course, it you know it's got everything that makes it a devil card. But I don't know. What are your thoughts on this devil card? Are they lured? Can they be lured? 
Is there something or someone in your life trying to lure you to do bad, do wrong? Are you in a codependent, addictive relationship? Okay, now we again have the traditional the devil card. And then let's start to take a look at some of the, the depictions of that. Here's the stretch tarot. And we have the devil here. You know, very traditional in its, in its depiction. So you could really, with the stretch, you could run with it. You could go with all your key meanings that you have. And, you know, it's... And, you know, and play around with that. But, I don't know. And I was looking at it, taking it in, I'm like, hmm. There's other cards in this particular deck that I just adore. This one, mm, it's okay. It's okay. Here's another depiction. Here's the texture. Yeah, they're on a fireplace mantle. And they... These little, they're like hooked up. The candles are not lit. You know, it's like the light is burnt out because of your attachments or your need to detach from a situation or from something or someone. But you can't. You're just locked there. To a particular master. Who is your master? Who is your master? Here is the darkness of light. Again, you no know, attachments. Some nudity here. Here's the fountain's devil. What do you get from that? Here is the Santa Mirte tarot. I love this one. Puppet master. Who is the puppet master in your life? Who is the El Diablo that's pulling the strings? Who or what? more nudity. This is the Celtic Tarot by Christopher Hughes. The Shadow. What I liked about this particular card is the shadow here. Is the eyes. The attachments. The, you know, lusty bodies. You know, depending on what your reading is about. This kind of can it can talk about the shadow and it talk about the darkness and talk about the fear and the attachment so it kind of can hit all those different devilish points but again still very much along that same vein and this one i'm going to show but I'm going to kind of put my finger over <laughs> over this part because it's you know well 
Anyways, we have the Central Wicked Tarot. And this is ridiculous that I am covering it, but there's a person here, a woman. She's blind or blindfolded, chained. This lady here, I mean, this is definitely a devil card that's kind of along the same vein, but definitely going there. So, there you have it. We'll end with a bang with the devil cards. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on the devil card, um, or at least the devil cards that I have in my little collection here right now. I will try to put all the decks in the description box um, just because I want to make sure that I give credit where credit is due for the lovely decks that I pull from. It's kind of fun to do this. This is fun. Like, look at all those devil cards. It's unsatisfying about that. I don't know why. I don't know why. So, what's your favorite devil cards? What's your favorite devil card meaning? Um, yeah, let me know. Give me your thoughts. Much love. Many blessings. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.